both in an interview. I like your mask. Oh yeah, it's uh, very cool. Rick and Morty. It's actually funny, when I was on the train yesterday coming up from DC, it was like, you had the, uh, the conductor coming going, tickets please, and the first thing you go is, it's the tickets please guy. Because they did an episode where they're on a train and they literally named the conductor tickets please guy because that's the only line that he said and then when he didn't get the tickets he ripped his shirt off and he's like highly jacked up and he's like tickets please and i was like this is fantastic and i posted that off on my facebook like random thoughts that you think about on the train <laughs> it, was like, it was like made a lot of people happy that day so by the way i'm michael I'm Kent. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, we're already recording. Just to get it out of the way, can you make sure that we're still recording? Let, let, let me check. Let me sure. check before I head. Because I don't. It want is. To it is. Oh, it is recording. It is recording. It's, an, it's a minute. There, there, there's no technical things coming up, ruining interviews, making me cry in the fetal position, which is what for, 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 for content. I put my phone on silent. So. Yeah, for I content. mean, I was literally in my hotel room for the last three hours, just crying in the fetal position with what happened in my other interview. So that phone, it was, it's connected to the Wi-Fi because I do Twitch streaming as well. And okay. I Twitch stream my panels. And what happened was is that um, I was interviewing uh, another guest and a notification came up, do you trust this Wi-Fi, connect or disconnect? And it cut off the recording a minute 24 into a 20 minute interview. That's why I'm having him like double check. Did you know? No. no. So you can't continue the interview with having no, oh. no idea, yeah, and it was like, so we're trying to reschedule. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would be in the fetal position crying. Yes, like yes. Oh no, ma'am, I'm, I'm, that shouldn't happen here. Yeah. Hopefully not. <laughs> no, no, hopefully not. Then the door was going to make you cry. There, but. There's a, there's a table there. I can just go underneath it. <laughs> fetal position. Every... We'll, we'll just quietly exit. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the experiences coverage here live at DerpyCon 2020. I am here with Mr. Kent Williams, who I, I have the IMDb pulled up. <laughs> I'm just going to make my life a little easier. I think you've done this thing called, what, Dragon Ball Z, I think. You know? Oh my goodness, that's because the one that started it all. Because you have like 333 credits on IMDb as an actor. IMDb, interesting. So IMDb, I also go to Anime News Network uh, because they have it. It's extremely thorough there. Yeah, so like at least for here, and I don't know, it doesn't want to work now because it's we're in, a, we're in New Jersey and of all places, of course, it's just going to do that to us. So, oh, there you go. Look, Dragon Ball Z, Boom. Full Metal Alchemist, more Dragon Ball Z, yeah. Fruits Basket, and... and you, just saw, you, just, you, just literally, you just literally saw it just pop up 333 right there. Did it really? It actually has that number? Yeah. It, I like that. 333. Yeah. I mean, you're, just, you're, just, you're just about halfway to 666. I mean, well, you're, Triple you're, Trinity, I'll take that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, real quick, uh, how did you get into the voice acting uh, industry and stuff like that? I was already an actor. So, I went to school, went to college for theater, and so got the basic theater training in Shakespeare, you know, on, and musical theater, all sorts of stage work. And, but being an actor in Texas, Texas. Not so much now, but Texas is a place to be from, right? I mean, you're going to go to New York or you're going to go to Los Angeles, right, if you're an actor. But I had a family, so I stayed right there in Texas, got myself an agent, did a lot of stage, getting reviewed by stage. I dated a reviewer, and then that so you reviewer... you had to get those good reviews. Uh-huh. Happened to be writing a story about um, this company that was coming out of Canada called um, uh, Funimation. And... Uh, with this show Dragon Ball Z, and none of us really had an understanding. I didn't even realize that when I was watching um, Speed Racer as a kid, that that was essentially anime, that that was Japanese. We didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, I remember watching that as a kid growing up on like Cartoon Network, and I didn't yeah. know that either. You know? So, I mean, just so as an actor's work, you know, you're auditioning for commercials, you're auditioning for, you know, all sorts of broadcast media. And then this was just another gig that popped up. And there was um, baby Chris Sabat and baby Justin Cook auditioning us. They were just fresh out of college, and no, none of nobody knew what was in our hands really. You know, it was a job to to do this thing called dubbing. You know, and uh, and it just kind of grew from there. Now, one of the interesting things because you mentioned Texas is um, that's kind of become a hotbed for voice acting. 
And especially hey, for the animation. That's uh, headquarters for Crunchyroll, and now Austin, our capital, you know, that's where a lot of work is happening. Many, uh, it's so central in the state, people will drive those hours to, to do an audition there and then come right back, you know, to your own city. Yeah, because I know, like, uh, what was it, years ago when I was at Anime USA in DC, like, I think Brina Valencia mm -hmm. had mentioned that, like, oh, I had just moved to Texas because that's where all the voice acting is for, you know, anime and J. Michael Tatum. And, you know, well, so many of us grew yeah. up right there, you know? Yeah, and I think a couple of them did grow up. And, you know, so it's kind of interesting to hear, it's like, you mentioned L.A. and New York. That's, like, theater, Broadway, you know, Hollywood, mm -hmm. you know, movie acting, TV acting. You know, but Texas is that, you know, that heart of the... Uh, the anime voice acting world. East Coast, West Coast, Best Coast. <laughs> so, um, what are some of the best anime, or not best, that's the horrible word to use <laughs> something like this, but what's some of your favorite animes that you've gotten to work on over, over the years that's maybe outside of Dragon Ball Z? I was gonna say, I mean, it's like picking a favorite child. I mean, they're all good. Now, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho was our second uh, title to come through. Uh, that was life after Dragon Ball because we uh, were all we're wondering like, well, what happens when we're actually done with these episodes? And then came Fruits Basket was the next one, and that was the show that my son was on it with me. You know, talk about follow your dad to work day. <laughs> you know, wait, literally. Uh huh. And ended up recording. And then you mentioned Brina, and Brina used to cast my son Adam on shows. It was, so it was, it was really great to be able to share that experience. So that show became my favorite title. Simply because my kid was on it. With it, it it's a family affair. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then I noticed you—you uh, you only did three episodes of it, but it's probably the only anime that I truly watched. But that's Attack on Titan. Right. Well, what, what I it, know. What's it like working on on a show like that that you know had a massive explosion in um, popularity? At like I think kind of like almost out of nowhere. It did. It did kind of come out of nowhere. I mean. That's one thing you th they think that they're getting an eight property and like, oh, this is going to be the big hit, and it ends up being something else. You know, you just can't plan for what fandom has, you know, in store for you. But that one, um, I, Mike McFarland directing us on that. I mean, like, I would have loved to have had a more than a three episodic <laughs> character on that. Yeah, I think I read that the, you're like a doctor or something. Like he was that. a merchant. Uh huh. And uh, I think I played a couple of guys on there, actually. Yeah, I did do a Doctor. So that's the one thing. It's like, if it's a small enough role, there's only so many Dallas actors. And this was before, this was pre-COVID, you know, of course. So we weren't doing, remote recording wasn't as necessary. So, you know, they weren't hiring actors, you know, out of state. So chances are, you're going to cycle back. Yeah. Just like on One Piece. And, um, and actually, that's a great thing that you brought up. You know, COVID and remote, you know, voice session. When you, how was that transition for you from going from voice acting in the studio to having the voice act from home? Like, how, how were you able to transition? I'm, so, I still haven't transitioned. <laughs> that was so you're, hard. You're just like, I'm still showing up in the studio. Let's but, you know, now Crunchy Road, but then, Funimation at that time, it was, they were on the jump. So within two weeks of, of being, uh, literally, I had been pulled off stage by my elbow, by my client that says, they just shut the county down. You have to come. You have to go. Here's your check. Um, it was about two weeks later that Funimation sent out all of these actor kits. Uh, so that they were all the same. Everything could be consistent. We had to construct them ourselves. But the recording of it was just a nightmare. Because um, it was just such a mad scramble just to get something going. Um, so I was able to record myself, but I was having to actually be the engineer's hands and the director's ears, because they were on the, they would be on a phone and they could not hear the playback. They could hear me lay down, you know, the... Lay down the track. Uh-huh. But then they could not hear it in the playback. So they were having to trust my ears that it worked. It, it's kind of interesting that you say that because um, I, I know this for this one podcast that I do because, uh, which is Voices from the Grid of Power Rangers podcast, where we review the shows and stuff like that but occasional episodes will do intros and we'll do read-throughs of the scripts and stuff like that. And we're all on Zoom. And, that was the booger. And, and the interesting thing is, is that like we'll do a couple read-throughs and we'll say, oh, change up how you say these words and stuff like that. So I find it interesting that you're reading, you're doing your dialogue with the director on the call with you. Yeah. 
and they're listening to you do that, I'm surprised that they're relying on you with the playback instead of hearing you say this stuff and then directing you right there after hearing what you just said. It was it, a nightmare for all parties it's, involved. It's very interesting, you know. Well, there was, it. and it was labor intensive. You know, we did we weren't sure what you're doing because you can't really focus on your voice if you're also thinking for the director, but also thinking for the engineer, you know, and then you're having to do everything and send the file this way and save it in just the right, it was, it was a lot to put on some stupid actors. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a stupid actor, good sir. <laughs> just a uh, learning curve, uh, Avis. Yeah, know? learning somebody else's, uh, learning how to, somebody else's but, job, de definitely developing a, even more respect. Yeah, I was about to say that, that that definitely gives you that, you know, appreciation for, like, what the others have mm -hmm. to do. And, and I was so ready to give it back. <laughs> Didn't want it. Um, have you been able to get back in the studio now? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, as, as soon as they that was an option, I was there. <laughs> about how soon from the start of the pandemic to when they said about how long was that? About a year? I was going to say maybe a year and a half. I mean, I haven't really backtracked it, but, I mean... I mean, all of, I mean, everybody knows, you know, all the time just w was warping <laughs> in there. Yeah. But I want to say it's about a year and a half, yeah. Which is about right, because that's about the time when... Maybe even more. Maybe. We only started going back into Studio Crunchyroll at the beginning of this year. Mm. Yes. And it was Max it. Card, masks, after you leave the booth, they've got a, a, a custodian coming in, shh, yeah. sterilizing everything, then the next actor can go in. So, I mean, it... They took it so seriously, and we're so grateful. Yeah, it, it's good to see that they took your help seriously because they have to. It's their industry, you know. Yeah, it's the, if they lose you guys, you know, they're commodities. They're, yeah. they're, they're kind of screwed. It's like, um, but like, um, which actually brings up a, another thought of like because of the pandemic, you know, like I did a lot more Twitch streaming, creating content of my own, you know. Obviously, like me, I didn't do the voice acting thing. I was just creating content, hopefully that people just find what I do fun and entertaining yeah. in general. But there are those who went in thinking, well, this is my chance because everything is going online at this point. Let's use this to try to maybe get discovered to do voice acting. And as you were saying, it's like because of the remote stuff, they can branch out more instead of just bringing someone in who's already in Texas, they can get someone in like where I live, Maryland or Virginia, you know, Utah. You know? And you say that, but that's already changed again. Yeah. So with Crunchyroll, you know, they want you to be in, in Texas. Texas. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's kind of the point that I was going to get to is, you know, during that time, you had all the people spread out. You had these people going like, I could use this as an advantage. Did you kind of see that a little bit where maybe more people tried to use that as an advantage to try to get into voice acting? I don't know, but I mean, if they didn't, I mean, you know, missed opportunity. Because that it's exactly what that was. That was, uh, that was an opportunity for everybody to participate, especially while it was such a mad scramble, you know? Yeah, yeah. because I, I was just like thinking about it, like, because as you're talking about the remote, I was like, yeah, that is would be a well, lot. And you know, the advent of like Voices.com. I mean, it was already starting before the pandemonium. So it, it just kind of yeah exploded. that they that that uh, I remember my talent agent in Dallas. They had a big meeting, you know, about what was happening in the industry. And now we're not just competing with other agencies; we're competing with the world. You know, and just like it's over. Yeah, of course, that wasn't true. You know, people still go to the agents. You know, so yeah. Well, and that, that, that's good for like you because now you don't have some Joe Schmo schmuck like me just coming in and taking, taking spots. Hey, everybody's from somewhere. Everybody comes in some door. Some may come in sideways. It's okay. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I tried the voice stuff and it didn't, it didn't work out for me. No? No. I, I tried acting and it did, just didn't work out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with hosting. I'm happy See, doing... See, you've I'm had happy, to try. Yeah, I, I'm happy doing this and it's like, so like for me, this is the thing. It's like, I, your personality is totally coming out because, like, even before we started doing the official interview, we were already cracking jokes and everything. So it's like, like did you know his IMDb has 333 credits? You know? Tell you what, that was a booger. My agent had to, we actually had to pay. It took him over a year to extricate Kent Williams from Kent Williams. 
who's older than me, it used to say that I was born in two different states in two different years, just under my name. Really? And picture, yeah. So it's interesting. If you look up my name in IMDb, there's actually two of me in there. See? One. <laughs> two of you, actually? Not enough. No, no. It's one Michael Lindbaum and then me. Oh, And man. the funny thing is the other Michael Lindbaum worked on, like, Batman and Robin in 97 and stuff like that. And I'm going like, yeah, I was in middle school when that happened. There's no way I was part of that. Yeah, the other Kent Williams was in War Games while I was watching it as a child. You know, <laughs> yes. I was like, this doesn't So IMDb has always been a very interesting uh, beast. And you mentioned that like um, that other site, uh, Anime. Uh, anime News for a n Yeah, that they have a more thorough. To me, yeah. because that's all it is. Yeah. And... I can go in there and find the title. I can find the name of that character. <laughs> Some obscure name. You know, because I don't want to look like I don't know who I've been. <laughs> I mean, I, that's my job. My job is to not know what you've been. <laughs> you're, you're, I actually love doing this, and then we'll wrap up in a moment, but one of the greatest things about doing this is that I may not know everything that you've done, Yeah. but I learned so much. And come up out of a greater with a greater appreciation because of the interviews, because there may be things that the viewers, myself, or whatever, may not know about because they only know you from a specific thing. Yeah, I tell you and, what. And it really and it really helps people like, oh wow, that's really cool and interesting. Well, then here's this. I mean, the acting is just maybe like was maybe twenty percent of my pre COVID life, but I was also a teacher, a contract teacher. Um, working with you know the full range preschool through college um, and training in like I train in Japanese kabuki theater and puppetry arts and uh, stunt uh, stage stunts so I had this whole other life plus dubbing and COVID killed all of that all of it so right now I'm on one track it's a single track but that has just really started to open up I thought oh gloom and doom but no it's actually created more opportunity, or more opportunity has been available. Yeah, and and that's a good thing. Because Heck yeah. It, it, it's good that things were, it's good that we're able to do this, because like not being able to do this at all in 2020, like just to sit down and have this interaction, just share some laughs. Sans mask. <laughs> I mean, hey, I've had to do a couple interviews with the mask, some without, you know, it depends on the person, I'm gonna, and I'm not gonna judge, you know? But, it, hey. I wear the mask all the time still when I go places, so that's just me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so real quick, how's derpy content to you? Because we can't we can't have a conversation without talking about derpy. So organized. So organized. I mean, uh, months before actually coming, just how the con just down to the administration, how the contracts are written, um, the communication you get. They provide a menu for their green room. I mean. I have I don't I don't see that level of detail everywhere. You hear that, Anthony? You're doing the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Plus, this is my first time in New Jersey. You know, you, you're, the second, like you're the second person that I've interviewed to tell me that. And it's gorgeous. I was I was really, really hoping that there was the fall was gonna look like what it does in the picture books, you know, movies, because in Texas, we don't get this. It's actually funny. I was born in New Jersey, and one of the biggest jokes that we have is is that once you get out of New Jersey, that's the greatest day of your life because you probably don't have to come back. What? <laughs> so, I mean, it also depends on who you are. If you're a New Yorker, you really have that mentality, same if you're from Philadelphia. So, I like it. I mean, we walked across the street. There's just a centuries old church with the with the graveyards with the grave markers right there. I mean, I mean, when you're those kinds of I mean, when you're, I mean, when you're the armpit of America. Oh my God! You, that's why do people say that? Is that because of the bend in the I state? Think, I think it is. It's just the positioning and oh, everything. Oh man, like that. cruel! It's the Garden <laughs> State, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A joke. <laughs> PG. PG. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I want to know. I'm doing off camera. Okay. Um, where can the people find you on social media? Well, I do have Twitter. I'm uh, at uh, Kent Williams VA. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Kent Williams, and I do have an Instagram. Now, I will tell you, social media, I'm a fella of a certain age. I'm still trying to Figure remember my login to MySpace. 
Oh, God, so, you have my face still? Dude, no, it's no, right no, here. No. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, I was just getting used to that. So, I mean, like, it... I, I still have my MySpace. It's hilarious. I'm one of those guys that needs to hire somebody with the quickness to get on that with me because it's just so much to keep up with. Just how it's okay it, in due time Twitter won't exist anymore. I had to be on my phone and wonder, did I just tweet? Or did I cluck? You know, I don't know what just happened. I mean, don't worry about it. Elon Musk just got Twitter yesterday. It'll probably be gone. It's years. all over the news cycle. Yeah, it, it'll probably be gone soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for better or for worse. So with that, thank you so much, Ken. And everyone, we're going to continue covering. Stay tuned. The Twitch will be live streaming. Maybe Among Us lobby. Maybe some joking hazard. Maybe some arcade stuff. Stay tuned. Have fun. Thank you so much. Oh, it stayed on.